Hi, my name is Emily and welcome to my channel, The Redheaded Ravenclaw. Today I'm going to be doing my July wrap up and I think there are 13 books I have to talk about. So let's just get right into it. So the first things I'm going to be talking about are My Hero Academia Volumes 3 and Volumes 4. Um, I'm going to be doing this wrap up in kind of the order I read things, but if there's like two of the same thing, like two volumes of manga, two volumes of graphic novel, I'm just going to be talking about them together. So anyways, Volume 3 and Volume 4 of My Hero Academia. Volume 3 I gave five stars. My Hero Academia is about a world where 80% of the population have quirks or powers, and our main character, who is right here, his name is Azuku Midoriya, he was born without a quirk, and then he was gifted a quirk by the number one hero, All Might. And so in this third volume, we continue on the story with the USJ League of Villains incident, and then move on to the sports festival. And if you, I'm trying to say as little as I can without spoiling it, so if you don't know um, much about the series, those aren't spoilery things really. Um, but I gave this one five stars because it's super funny in the moments when things aren't very tense. Uh, we get a lot of sassy Bakugo, who is um, Midoriya's kind of friend, but also enemy. Um, and we get um, some of Uraraka's backstory about why she wants to be a hero. And also, I need to mention um, they like the whole premise of after like getting a quirk, these select few students get to go to UA high school and they are being trained to become superheroes. So there's just a lot of great content in here, funny moments, and I really loved this volume. And then volume four, I gave four stars. It was good, it continues on with the sports festival and I just didn't like it as much as the uh, third volume, but I just I love this series so much and we get some of Todoroki's backstory and uh, the one of the most iconic lines from Todoroki where he asks um, uh, Where he asks Midoriya if he's All Might's illegitimate child uh, because they're not allowed to know that uh, Midoriya has All Might's power and it's just a really hilarious moment in my opinion. So five stars to this one, four stars to this one, and I'm gonna be continuing on with the series in August. The next book that I read, I don't have a physical copy of, I listened to it on audiobook, is Radio Silence by Alice Oseman. And I absolutely loved this book. Um, I had been wanting to read it for a while, I don't know why I put it off for so long, but then I heard Kat from Paperback Dreams talk about how much she loves it all the time, and um, I just decided to bite the bullet. I listened to the audiobook of it this month, and it was five stars. Um, Radio Silence is about this girl named Frances who draws um, fan art for this podcast called Universe City, and she gets asked to um, do the fan art for the actual show by the show's creator who's been anonymous but then Francis and the creator of University end up striking up a friendship and it's just so beautiful and I really love the discussion of um, struggling to decide what to do after high school struggling with expectations um, I can't personally relate to that struggle and I'm not trying to say that to be like, oh, I was on top of things, but I just knew from a long time ago that I wanted to go to college and pursue, you know, post high school graduate education. And so, but I really appreciate the discussions that it had. There are a couple trigger warnings, I would say, for anxiety, depression, and then also a pet death, which I wish that I knew about going into because it kind of was like okay that's a thing but it wasn't I, I didn't know about it and so I know other people probably are 
you know, don't like to read about that either. So I just wanted to put that out there. But I just loved the audiobook particularly. The, the voice actors were really great. And I just loved the pacing and the different aspects of the podcast throughout. And it was just a really beautiful story. And I really want to read other Alice Oseman books now. And she just released the cover of her newest book and it is beautiful. So I'm excited to read more from her and continue on later at some point. But yeah, Radio Silence was five stars for me. The next book I read is Glitter and Glue by Kelly Corrigan. And I also listened to it on audiobook. I just happened to have a physical copy. And this is a, oh, excuse me, this is a memoir of Kelly's about when she um, decided that she wanted to travel a bunch after, I think it's after high school, and she ends up landing in Australia and she becomes a nanny to this family who um, the mother of the family dies. And it, the story, the memoir tells about the things she learned from the two kids she was nannying and the other people who lived in the house with her. And last year I read Kelly Corrigan's memoir, kind of memoir, called Tell Me More, and I absolutely loved it. And so I picked this up. This is like an, this came out before Tell Me More did. And I, I like this one as well. I gave it four stars. Tell Me More was a five star read for me, but this one was really good too. I really like um, the audiobook because Kelly narrates it herself. And so she can tell her own story at a great pace and tell it with, conviction and it was just it was an interesting um like it was interesting to hear her talk about the struggles of being abroad and having to work but also wanting to like live it up and explore and stuff and the things she was learning from this family so um this is obviously nonfiction. And like I said, I gave this four stars. The next two things I'm going to be talking about are I Hate Fairyland volumes three and four. This is the, these are the last two uh, volumes in the I Hate Fairyland series. And so first I guess I'll talk about volume three. These are by Scotty Young and volume three, it was okay. It follows the, each, these are very linear. And so this followed directly after the events of Volume 2. And it had been a while since I read Volume 2, so I had to flip back through that one before I continued on with this one. And I just wasn't really a fan of where the plot went in Volume 3. Um, it kind of followed Gertrude trying to make up for some of her bad actions in the first two volumes. And I, I love the art style in this book. Like, obviously this looks like a very cutesy, happy, uh, you know, fun graphic novel series, but then you look at volume four and there's like all this death and destruction and that's more characteristic of the story. So um, I gave volume three, three stars. It was not my favorite in the, in the series. And then I continued on with volume four and this is the conclusion to the story. And I ultimately did like where it ended up, where it wrapped up. I think that um, they chose the, dire the right direction to go with the story. And I'm really glad that we revisited some old characters in this volume. And we just kind of got to see the end of Gertrude's story. And I think, uh, I think it was good. I didn't like how we got to the end necessarily. But and I'm not sure if I like the end end part. If you've read it, you know what I'm talking about. But I gave this volume four stars. I'm really glad that I read this series. It's not my favorite ever, but I this art style is great. And there's just some hilarious moments. And it was, I think actually, I Hate Fairyland is the first graphic novel, like the first volume of it is the first graphic novel I read. Um, and it's kind of bittersweet to be over with it, but I'm glad that I did it and I'm glad that I can try other things based on my knowledge of how I enjoyed this. So the next thing I read was Hidden Figures by Margot Lee Shutterly. And I was supposed to read this for a book club my 
junior or senior year of college and I didn't have time to like read it. I read like the first I don't know, 30 or 40 pages and I just kind of got bored with it and I ended up having to do something else and wasn't able to participate in the book club anyways and so I set it aside and then I ended up picking up the audiobook for it on Scribd this month and it was the perfect timing because this past month had the 50th anniversary of the moon landing and this is a story of the African-American women who um, were mathematicians and like they were called the computers in the 50s when um, NASA was being formed and when they were starting to do rocket launches and we were the U.S. was really trying to advance and move forward in the space race and so while I am very interested in these women's stories and the the struggles that they went through in terms of racism and sexism um, this was just told in a very boring way and that's not to discredit these women's stories, like I was saying. Like I think their story is so important and I want them to I want their story to be known. But the way that this book was written and told is very boring. And it was very science and math heavy, which I am not like geared towards that mindset. So it was hard to listen to. And the story was just really repetitive, in my opinion. And so I ended up giving it two stars and it, that's purely uh, based on the writing of the story, not the story itself. And I just, I wish it was told better and it's really long for how, like, I don't know, it does span over a long period of time and so I understand, but I just, I did not enjoy my experience listening to this and I probably would have enjoyed the movie more. I haven't watched the movie, so I might do that and see if it comes across better, but I landed on two stars for this one. Okay, so this might be my first drop of piping hot, controversial, unpopular opinion tea on book two, <laughs> but I did not like The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell. And it's funny because I saw several people, including Common Spence and Books with Chloe, read this for their um, book club that they do, Books with Friends. And they, I know Chloe gave it five stars. I can't remember what Spencer gave it, but I did not like this. And so this is about time travel. It's very, there's a lot to this book. Um, I can't even remember the main character's name. Uh, Esta. So the main character, Esta, has the ability to travel through time and she's sent back in time to get these artifacts in this one particular book that can destroy this bridge kind of thing that um, destroys magic, sort of, or like takes it out of people and it kills them. And so this had the potential to be really, really good. And I think if I read it at a different time in my life, I would have enjoyed it more. But my major hang up is that I kept comparing it to the Six of Crows duology. And I didn't start booktube until after I, I read um, the Six of Crows duology in May and June, I believe. And so I didn't get a chance to talk about it on my channel, or I haven't had the chance to, but I absolutely loved that duology. And so I think picking this up so quickly after I read that really hindered my uh, opinion of it. I thought it was very slow. It took me a couple weeks to read this book and it does not take me that long to read things, especially when they, have the plot twists and things like this does. I just, there were things in here that should have been surprising to me and I was just kind of like, oh, that's a thing that happened. And so it was just kind of like, I don't know, I wasn't surprised by the plot twist and I wasn't like flipping the pages faster to know what happened. And 
I just kind of feel like it was too slow, too long, and I I will not be picking up the uh, sequels to this book just because I think the only thing that I would be interested in is the relationship that we kind of get towards the end and I won't spoil anything but yeah this is I'm sad that I feel that way about this but I gave it two stars and um, it put me in a, a reading slump pretty bad and I was kind of like feeling meh about everything after reading Hidden Figures and this that were both two stars um, but then we had the reading rush and everything was fine. So <laughs> anyways, that's my thoughts on this. Didn't love it and I won't be continuing with the series. Okay, so next are the books that I read during the um, reading rush and I'm not going to talk a super lot about them. Hopefully I can talk a lot about books. So hopefully I will not talk too much about these because I have two reading vlogs out about my reading rush and I talked a lot during those. But I'm just going to talk about my ratings and a little bit about what the book's about. Then hopefully we will move more quickly. So the first book I read for the reading rush was Schadenfreude, The Joy of Another's Misfortune by Tiffany Watt Smith. And this is exactly what it says. It's the phenomenon of why we get enjoyment from other people's failures, other people's uh, mishaps. And this is things like why we really like watching fail videos or like why we watch America's Funniest Home videos, why we, you know, get a little tickle of joy when the, uh, when the mean coworker we have doesn't get the promotion that they go up for, just things like that. Like why we feel that joy, why we get that experience. And I rated this four stars originally and I'm thinking about lowering my rating because now that it's a few days later, it's not like I'm not remembering a lot from this book. I remember the examples that she gave, but I'm not remembering like the reasoning behind why we get this experience. And I don't know who I am because I read three, I'm pointing down here because I have all my books in a basket, but I do not read nonfiction very often. And I read three nonfiction books this month, so I don't know who I am, but anywho, four stars to this. I might lower it to three stars because I just, I don't remember a lot from it. And it's super short. It's like only 146 pages. So yeah, the psychology behind it is really actually interesting. Um, and it's something that we don't think about that often, I think, like why we get excited when something bad happens to our enemy. But that's that. Four stars. Might be a three. I'll think about it. So the next book is another one I don't have a copy of because I read it on Scribd as an ebook, and that is Coraline by Neil Gaiman. Coraline is about a young girl who moves into this house that has been like split up into different apartments, and there's kind of some kooky people that live in the other parts of her apartment. One day when she's exploring, she finds a door and nobody really knows where it goes to and it's bricked up. And then um, one night she opens the door and it leads into an alternate reality where she has other parents and they have buttons for eyes and uh, spooky weird things start to happen. And so I really liked this. I gave it three stars because the plot just kind of like things happen in really rapid succession without explaining like why we're moving so quickly between them. And I read this one for the challenge of read a book and watch the movie adaptation for the reading rush. And I think the movie actually does a better job of um, the pacing in this book, but the, the, the ebook actually has some of the illustrations that are in the physical copy of the book Coraline. And so that was really cool to see the really creepy uh, sketches that Neil Gaiman did. And, uh, or at least I think he does them, I'm not sure. But I love things like, I love Tim Burton. I love um, just like the creepy, spooky 
Halloweeny, like things that I personally associate with Halloween, like um, The Nightmare Before Christmas and uh, The Graveyard Book, things like that. And so Coraline, I lump in with those other things and I, I enjoyed it a lot. It just, I think being a middle grade book, it, it was a little more simplified than the movie is. And not to say that the movie is not a kid's movie, but I think the movie does a, a little bit better job of explaining things more thoroughly. And so I did enjoy the book and I enjoyed the movie a lot. And so I am glad that I finally read it. And like I said, it was a three star read for me. All right, the next book that I read is one that I picked up because uh, I've literally heard nothing but good things about it. And the hype for this book is wild but I bought it while I was in Washington DC visiting my best friend and that is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston and y'all this is so so good like the hype is well deserved and I freaking love this book. This follows um, Alex who is the first son in a alternate universe not really universe but an altered reality where a woman wins the 2016 presidential election and that woman happens to be alex's mom and it follows after um alex and the prince of england whose name is henry have a mishap at the royal wedding and they're forced to pretend to be friends and then it develops into a really adorable relationship and i loved it it was so cute and i was worried going into this because i like i want to be knowledgeable about politics but i am not and so i was scared that the talk of the politics in here and the political jargon and whatever would be off-putting for me but it really wasn't over the top and after i had just been in washington dc and um just kind of like, I don't know, this is a very fitting book for the time. And I love the friendships in here. The White House trio is great. The bodyguards are great. I just, the, everybody is has their own personality. Everybody is well explained. And uh, Alex and Henry's relationship is so good. I love their conversations that they have. Um, the sexy times are very good. They are steamy and I, it's, it, I like it because it's new adult and they're like my age. And so it's impressive to read about them and be able to relate to them. And uh, it's just wonderful. It makes my heart happy. So obviously this is a five star. I like read this book, please. And, um, I will definitely read more by Casey McQuiston when she writes more. Yeah, this was amazing. So the next book that I read was the illustrated edition of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. And this is so beautiful, you guys. The art in here is amazing. I have had this for a while now and I just haven't like sat down and read through all of it. I've like flipped through it a little bit and now I just need to buy all of the ones that are out. and. This is heavy, so I can't imagine how heavy like Goblet of Fire and the later books are because like you could kill somebody with this thing and I, I don't anyways, um, obviously Harry Potter, Wizards, you know, the deal, uh, <laughs> Chosen One, blah blah blah, Hogwarts, yay. Um, but this is just a different experience. This, seeing it with the illustrations by Jim K are, is like such a unique experience. Um, my, one of my favorite images is the one of Hagrid's hut, if I can find it. It, I just love the interpretations of these, um, images. And it's interesting to see which ones they, the artist chose to draw out of all of them. Here it is. If you can see this. It is so beautiful. And like 
I just love that there's pumpkins everywhere and it's just like a little hobbit hut and I I love it. I'm obsessed. So this was obviously an easy five stars and I definitely want to buy the next ones that are out and continue to buy them as they come out and just enjoy this for forever and ever. All right, I have one more book to talk about that I actually finished and then one book that I DNF'd. So the last book that I finished was Scythe by Neil Schusterman. And this is about a world where death has been conquered um, in terms of disease and kind of like crime and things like that, like natural causes of death have been eradicated. And in order to keep the population down, there are scythes who glean people at random. Our main character, Citra, has been chosen to be an apprentice as well as a our other kind of main character, his name is Rowan. They have both been chosen to be apprentices to a scythe, and so they're being trained on how to do this. And I just really enjoyed the um, discussion of death and morality in this book, and I loved to see the divergence of the two main characters and the different paths that they take to get to scythedom. And, um, I got major Hunger Games vibes from this, which it has a completely different plot and there's really like not a whole lot that is similar to the Hunger Games, but that's just the vibes that I got from this. And um, this is just a really unique story and I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars and I'm really excited to continue on with Thunderhead and then The Toll, the third book, is coming out later this year, I believe. And so I'm really excited to see where the story goes. I think it ended in a very interesting way. And I think that this could be a favorite series of mine, potentially. Like I gave the first book four stars, but I think that depending on where Thunderhead goes and where the toll goes, that it could go up in rating. Like not this particular book, but those two could go up in rating for me. And I really like the main characters in this book. Like they're very... Um, I don't know, I think they're described really well. I like their personalities and I just, I like that um, we get conflict in between them. I think that it will be interesting to see. I could see this as a movie for sure. And uh, yeah, that's my thoughts on this, <laughs> four stars. So the book that I ended up DNFing is Jasper Jones by Craig Sylvie. This book is set in Australia and it's about this kid named Charlie who's kind of a loner and one day this kid named Jasper Jones shows up at his window and says that he needs Charlie's help and so they go and there's a big problem and they have to uh, figure it out basically because uh, somebody has either killed themselves or been murdered so obviously trigger war trigger warning for suicide or murder potentially i'm not sure i only read to page 78 so i don't know what it will end up being and the reason that i put this down is because actually there's a few reasons there's just some really problematic stuff in this um for one there is the r word used a couple of times in the first 78 pages and i don't know if it continues to be used throughout there's also racial slurs used against a Vietnamese character several times. Um, but then the main thing that made me stop reading this was that they, um, this boy's, um, I think it's a lacrosse team or a rugby team or some, maybe cricket, some sports team. They are practicing and this girl walks through the field and they just start harassing her and um, that's a pretty like, I don't know, it's a descriptive scene about some, like they yell some vulgar stuff at her and do some vulgar actions and so just be warned about that if you read this. Um, I was not going to put up with reading it and so I DNF'd this and I will not be continuing with it. So, hate to end on a bad note, but that is that. All right, so now I get to be an official, like this is my official booktube christening moment, I feel like, because I have my stack of books I read this month. 
and all except for Coraline and Radio Silence are here. But yeah, here's my book stack and I feel like I need to like pose for a thumbnail here, so. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, these are all the books I read in July. Oh no, we're not having a toppling moment. And that is 13 books. Oh man, I should have turned this around. There we go. <laughs> uh, 13 books I read in July. I'm really proud of that. I think I also read 13 things in June. And so if I could keep up the pace in August, that would be really great. I'm already well on my way to my Goodreads goal. And um, I am feeling really good about this reading year. I've read some really great things and I'm excited to see where the rest of the year takes me. And I'm really excited that I have started this booktube journey. And so hopefully I will continue to um, be excited about reading for the rest of the year. And I do start grad school back next month in August, um, or I guess it's this month. But anyways, I start grad school back, and so I know my reading time will be reduced when that gets into full swing again. But until then, I'm just going to read as much as I possibly can and enjoy my time while I'm not stressed the heck out. So that's going to do it for today. I hope y'all tune in for more content on my channel, and I've got to think up some ideas of things to do for, the, for August because I don't make TBRs. I just am such a mood reader, I pick up what I want to, and so th that won't be a thing that'll be on my channel, but I'm going to think of other things to do and find some tags probably and make up some other fun content and then also probably talk about my library school stuff. So anyways, that's all for this month, for July. I participated in the reading rush, I did the booktube newbie tag, and now my July wrap up. So. That's all for me. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.